All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the latest version of Simpler to generate random snaps or any other randomized audio file that you want so that every time I trigger that sample to play back, I get a random variation upon this sample. This can really help when writing repetitive music and getting constant minute variations every time something repeats. So here's just a little flavor of what it's going to sound like when we're done. The first step is to record in an audio sample of whatever it is that I'm looking for and to, to try and create as much variation in that sample as possible. So I'm going to go to one of these empty audio tracks. I'm going to rename this one as Snaps. Then I'm going to check my levels when I snap. I see I'm getting a little distortion. I'm using my built-in microphone. So I'm going to go to my system preferences to attenuate that input just a little bit. So let's bring that down just a touch. Something like that. That looks better. Great. Now let's record enable this track. I'm going to leave monitoring set to off. I don't need to hear the input while I'm doing this. And I don't need a metronome either because time or how uh, whatever time meter or whatever beats per minute I'm playing in doesn't matter. I just need to get some samples of some snaps here in a long stream of an audio file. So I'm going to click record and lay down some snaps. Cool, that should be enough. Let's listen to that. Don't need any warping. Make sure that I didn't get any digital clipping going on there. Nope, looks good to me. So there's our file of random snaps. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply take and drag that audio clip onto the devices view of a MIDI track, or I could go over to my browser, grab instruments, and drag and drop a simple onto that track, but this is kind of a shortcut doing that. But if I drop any audio clip onto an empty MIDI tracks devices view, it will automatically load that up inside of a simpler. So now once I've got the simpler going, I'm gonna switch it from classic mode into slices mode. What this does is it automatically goes in and it analyzes looking for transients, so the start of some sort of event, and it slices that up so that I can play a note from um, C1, C sharp, D, D sharp, and every single slice in here falls under a different chromatic key under my keyboard. So before the old simpler, this was a little bit um, more time consuming to do this, but this is lightning fast to do it now. So it's already done it. If it's um, off, like maybe there was one missing, it looks like it did a really great job with this one, but I could add one in if I wanted to, or I can delete them just by double clicking on them, or I could try adjusting the sensitivity knob here to get rid of them, but this file is super straightforward, so it's it's got it handled. So the next thing I want to do is to load this up inside of a drum rack. So I could really quickly and easily do that by control clicking on the title bar, going up to group to drum rack. You'll see it puts it inside of a drum rack. Let's rename that as snaps. Let's slide that over to the D1. It's just where I think of my snaps being usually around there. So now you'll notice that when I play or trigger that D1, none of my slices are triggered. And that's because of the way that drum rack is set up to behave by default. If I expose the rack section of the drum rack, you can see down here I get three more options for available visibility of parameters. What I want to expose is the inputs and the outputs for every given chain. Right now we've only got one chain inside of our drum rack. On the snaps chain here, you can see that this pad here, or this chain, receives or is triggered by a D1. So when I play a D1, let's move down, I'm hitting that D1. But you can see what it plays is it translates that D1 into a C3. And what we know is that that first slice there is going to be C1, this is going to be C sharp 1, D1, so on and so forth up chromatically. So we're already well above the range of this mode, the slicing mode within Simpler. So I want to bring this all the way down to C1. Now when I trigger that, that's what we get. But let's come in and let's edit this so that our first slice isn't that silence, but rather that first snap. So now what I'm gonna do is, every time I trigger this sample or trigger this slot within my drum rack, I wanna get a different random slot or a different random slice or a different random snap to play back. 
So what I'm gonna do is go to my browser, MIDI effects, grab the random, and drag and drop it onto that pad just before that simpler. And the next thing is I'm gonna count how many slices I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then I'm going to make the choices for my random one less than the number of slices I have. So the way the random works is it's gonna generate a random note every time it receives a note. And it's gonna either give me that note or plus the number of the scale that we've set here. So I've got plus uh, any random value that could be up to 18 single steps or semitones above the note that it's received. So if I increase the chance here that we're gonna get a random note, I play that note. You can see we always get another random note. So then I can go in and use all the power of the simpler to create even more. One of the things I like to do is just grab the ran pandem so that every time I trigger a note it randomly places that somewhere else. Another thing is to go in and group that device that's within that pad in the drum rack. So when I group that it means now I've got another rack inside of my drum rack so I can come in and duplicate. Now I've got two of that same instrument with that same sample loaded up inside of it with that same MIDI effect. Both of those with that random randomized panning. So now when I trigger this, you'll hear that I'm getting two different random snaps, each randomly panned left or right. So as I start to duplicate this out, let's go four of them. Start to get some random things happening. So the next thing is we should build up this drum rack. So let's go to our samples tab, search for our kick, drop that in there. So now you're starting to hear one other tiny little thing that we should adjust about this is that every time I trigger that sample, that snap sample, you can see that its behavior is to play the entire duration of that slice, even if I trigger it very quickly or very shortly. And that's because it's set up to be in trigger mode rather than gate mode. So in trigger mode, every time it only cares about the start or the note on event so that I've told it to play back. It doesn't care when I tell it to stop playing back by lifting that MIDI note or stopping that MIDI event. So if I switch it into gate mode, now I'm going to do it on all four because I've got a rack going here. You'll see that now it only plays for as long as the note is held. So it allows me both a little bit more musicality and then I can draw out that the sound of that recording a little bit longer as well as I don't have to worry about all of the other little things that happened in that recording um, being heard, that it just stops as soon as I tell it to stop snapping. So now we get. So we should probably get a little bit of reverb to hide that gated room sound. There you get the basic concept. So you can use this for anything. It doesn't have to be just snaps. It could be any audio file you want to, uh, that you want to randomize the playback so you get different samples every single time you trigger that same MIDI event. So hope this helps. Hope this inspires you guys a little bit and good luck making music.